Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer and today we're going to be talking about different ways that you can color your line image, um, the line images when you stamp them. So you found me here on YouTube. I also have a Facebook page also called North Star Stamper. You can find me um, on my blog at North Star Stamper. These are my stamps.com and there I share a lot of the cards you see me make in the videos and it lists the items um, that I used from Stampin' Up! to create those projects. And I also have a website where you can order from me through Stampin' Up! and um, on there it lists activities and events and projects and specials and there's a lot on my website. I hope you check that out and if you are in North in the United States and are looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. So enough with the business, let's start stamping. So today we're talking about coloring stamped images. Um, I'm going to show you my samples first and then I'll show you the stamp sets I used. This was colored in using blends. It was stamped in Memento Ink Tuxedo Black. It's the only color we carry. I will do a separate video just on blends. They are our alcohol markers. Um, this one was stamped also in Memento Ink, and then I used watercolor pencils. I'll um, show you how I color with watercolor pencils. This one, if you can see in the light, I embossed it in copper embossing powder and um, used a heat tool to melt the powder. And then I colored the flower and the leaves with ink from my ink pad. I will show you that today too. And if you've stamped with me for any length of time, you know that this is my favorite technique. When I get a new stamp that is an outline stamp, I like to, what I call, watercolor it. So I pulled the ink, so I stamped this in Blackberry Bliss, and then I use an aqua painter or a water brush to pull out the ink from the stamped image, and that's where the color comes from. Here's one to show you that you don't have to just do flowers. This is from the Rustic Retreat stamp. And I stamped the cabin in brown, and then the trees, and then these um, twig in green. And then I pulled the color from the stamped image. And I added a little gray on the roof and the um, chimney. And here's another one. I believe this is Granny Apple Green. And uh, I have to peek. I have it on here. Calypso Coral. And this was done on shimmer paper. I don't know if you can see it shimmering. It is. And a few other ideas. You don't have to just stamp flowers, like I said. And can you tell the difference between those two rhinos? This one I colored. Um, they're both stamped in basic gray. In this one I used my water, my aqua painter, to pull out some of the color. So he's just a little more gray. You can do cars, or trucks in this case. I stamped this in Night of Navy and then pulled out the uh, ink from the um, for the body of the truck and then did it, I did add basic gray on the wheels. Black I thought would be too harsh so I use gray a lot in place of black. And then another one we're going to do today, a finished card here. I won't be finishing any cards today, I'm just going to show you how I color images. But I stamped this in um, Mossy Meadow and pulled out the color. I added a little bit of pink for the flowers that are on that wreath and added some um, dyed twine and a sentiment and it's ready to go. Who has a birthday coming up? I um, have a couple in our family in May. So let's start stamping. Oh, stamp sets I used on those samples. Breathtaking Bouquet was that large background stamp. The Peaceful Place, you may have seen this stamp set, or this stamp on one of the samples. Just the sentiment. And the sentiment was used in one of them. My favorite happy birthday greeting is this one from the Magnolia Blooms stamp set. That's in the beginner brochure. To a Wild Rose is the flower and the leaf you've seen a lot on my samples. Uh, you Are So Loved is where I got the wreath. The truck came from Pedal to the Metal. And then the rhino came from Animal Outing. Those are all in the, well, all but this one are in the current annual catalog. This one is in the beginner brochure that is current now as of April 2020. So um, let's talk about the paper I use. Um, so this one I stamped the breathtaking bouquet in Rococo Rose on just plain 
cardstock and can you see how it warped the cardstock isn't flat anymore if I put a lot of adhesive on the back you might be able to use this in a, um, a card and I probably will um, but most often it's better to use a thicker cardstock like our thick cardstock can you see here that's our thick uh, very vanilla or watercolor paper is even better yet because um, that way you can add more water to get more color from your stamped image. So let's start with a couple things. This one I embossed with gold embossing powder and I already started it but I can show you how I did that. So I take our ink pad and squish the lid to the base and then you get a puddle of ink in your lid. You use an aqua painter, which these are being retired and being replaced by something they're calling a water brush or water. I don't know. So when you see them on the retiring list, we are still going to have. So I'm just getting a little ink from the lid and adding it to my stamped image. The more water you have, the paler the color will be. And I try not to color everything. You just want the idea that this is Melon Mambo. You don't need to color every last bit. So make sure you have paper towel handy. Clean off your brush. And we'll switch to some green. I have um, Pear Pizzazz. Oh, you can see I already have ink in my lid, so I don't need to squish the lid and the base together. And then I like to start in the middle and then just add a little extra color to the outside. For leaves anyway go up the middle and then add more let's finish this one and you get the idea just add a little bit of color so that's embossed and then you can add color um, I would probably use stays on if you just want to stamp in black and then add water from the lid of your um, ink pad so that's one option another option would be Um, we'll stick with that flower. So I'm going to use Memento ink. This is black tuxedo, or tuxedo black, I think. See how I did pretty good. I normally like to have my Stampin' Pierce mat under my paper when I'm stamping. So, uh, you can't see, sorry. And I like to take the ink off that stem so I can get those leaves closer to the flower. Turn it around and do that again on the other side. Clean my hand off a little bit. All right, this time we're going to use watercolor pencils. I believe these are from the two different sets we have. So I have Garden Green, Melon Mambo, Real Red, and Granny Apple Green. So what I like to do is where Stampin' Up! has given us extra lines, like the veins in the leaf and these little lines in the petals, that's where I'm going to add my darkest color. So this is real red. And then, it to me it looks like you're melting the watercolor pencils when you add either water from a uh, water brush, or you could just use a paintbrush and add water that way. That'd be a lot of water. You could probably... Take some of the water off your brush if you're just using a brush. I will show you two different ways. So I just add, you can see it's kind of sloppy. I, it's kind of fun to see what happens when, let's do some leaves. So I'm going to add dark green. So this is the garden green. This color has been around so long and I'm glad we still have it. And I'm going to add some granny apple green around the edges. And we won't do them all. You don't need to watch me color. So first we'll show the water brush, aqua painter, water pen. Can you see what I'm doing there? It's melting. And it kind of um, uh, swirls them together. That's the words come to my mind right now. Not quite. So this is a blender pen. There is blending fluid in this brush, and that works just as well. Clean these off on paper towel so I don't... And there's the difference between... You can't really tell the difference. It's more 
how you put the color down. Let's do some of these leaves and show you. Look how sloppy that is. And when you add water, I'm going to start where I put the red and then blend it out. I'll do one more. It just melts. It's so fun to play with these watercolor pencils. And we'll leave it in like that so you can see the difference when you add water, blender pen or aqua painter. You can add color to your stamped images that way. And my final, well, maybe not my final. Let's do, is that going to fit in there? It will. Let me grab my last ink. So I'm using Mossy Meadow for our wreath here. And I haven't tried this together. So this is watercolor paper. As I said, we can add more water when we use the thicker papers. We'll put it sideways. And I probably should not have that stamp and pierce mat under me. This is a red rubber um, stamp and there's already a cushion in there. Let me take that out of the way. You can see it's because the um, paper is very rough. You can't see too much. When we add water to this, so it's just a line image, and I'm, if you notice on my last, my sample I had of this, I did not color every leaf. So I'm just taking water from these lines. Let me come closer to the camera. So especially these that have the line going down the middle, and just color it in. Just take the ink from the image and Let's do some all the way around. So on the sample I had of this stamp, I did color these flowers in with Melon Mambo, and I thought they were too bright, so I added a, a rhinestone. Then I thought the rhinestones were too, were too um, bright. So let me find that card again. So you just color in a few of the leaves. My favorite technique. So I will make that into a card like that. So I colored the flowers with Melon Mambo. I thought they were too bright, so I added rhinestones. The rhinestones were too glitzy, so I used a blends marker to color on my rhinestones. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. And I hope to um, you join me again next time I'm here on YouTube. Take care. Bye.